Hi guys, welcome to a Cumbrian Lad Outdoors and welcome back to the beautiful Lake District and today's video. Today we have parked up in Coniston and I'm heading up the Old Man of Coniston to wild camp the night. We are literally just on the outskirts of Coniston now. You can see we've just come over that wee bridge there. And we just and saw at the start of the trail with a lovely clear path. You will notice that I am wearing a new rucksack, which is the Atom Packs EP40 Plus. As part of my preparations for attempting Hadrian's Wall coast to coast and for when it's really hot in the summertime, reducing my pack size and weight, this is the first go with this new rucksack. This pack is full. I've taken some luxuries with me and I've left some behind. I've sacrificed my chair for a sit mat, but I have managed to squeeze my drone in there. So as always, come join me and I'll show you the beautiful views of the Lake District as they open up. It's a nice easy start to the walk this. The path is lovely and clear and it's a very gentle ascent. That being said, it is circa the 26, 27 Celsius so it's very warm and sweaty today. And we do have a lovely looking waterfall down there. That would be perfect for a dip in the bottom and to get washed off. And it does look like you have some people ziplining potentially. I can't see a zipline or are they jumping in? I'll maybe hang around a little bit to find out. Oh no, here we go. Not sure exactly what that's called. Potentially a bit of gill scrambling. They're just getting lowered down that waterfall on a rope. Nevertheless, it looks like awesome fun. So for now, I'm just gonna continue on my way. Since I last had the camera on, we've had a lovely bit of flat walking, but we're now starting the ascent proper. You can just and so see Coniston water, and we're now in a lovely valley. You can see the river is really low. We've got some spoil heaps over there. And you can see various mountains around us, waterfall, and I believe that, where are we at there, that there is the old man of Coniston. Or certainly somewhere up there anyways. As always, I'm using the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro Solar to keep me on track. And this time, I've programmed it properly, I've made sure, double sure, it's the route that I want right up. So hopefully we shouldn't have any repeats of last time I was out on my own. The path is steadily getting steeper now. And at the minute we've just got a little bit of a respite from the sun as it's gone behind a cloud. Still in among this lovely valley, we've got plant and machinery down at that area there. Looks like there's some kind of mill wheel. There's some kind of quarry here, we've got some more machinery over there. And a quarry face. Looks like we might have a little bit of respite once we get through this gate and over the brow of the hill. I think we must be going left and then up that ridge to the top. And right now it doesn't look that far, but I dare say I might change my mind halfway up. The route is now starting to get very steep. You can see already the valley that I was walking past not 10 minutes, 15 minutes earlier is now quite away in the distance. And you can see there, it is very steep. But with that comes a cracking view of Coniston water and the fells in the distance in among the summer haze. We are now deep in the quarrying history of this area. Looking right down on the modern day quarry below, but we can see here some old school metal rope, which must have been a part of some kind of pulleying system. And we've also got a building just ahead. So we're gonna go and check that out. we are seeing this more and more often in the Lake District. And it's just not acceptable. Even banana skins can take a year to a year and a half to break down properly. If you can take it with you, you can carry it back down. If those are still there in the morning, I'll be taking them with me. Leave no trace people. 
little bits of buildings here. You can see train tracks that have been used for carts. Got the remains of several pulley systems. Great big old oak beams, heavy metal ropes. <clears throat> Part of some engineering by Bramley Engineering Company of Leeds. And we've got a date here of 1690 to 1960. This was the riving shed, whatever that was. We've got some thick metal pipe but not much remaining of that building. Quite a bit left of this one. Remainders of windows. Just looking up to where we're going, you can see there's massive spoil heaps of slate. Even down this backside, we've got remains of the old mine works. Big thick metal poles in the ground. Another building just down the back of the other side. And just looking back the way we've come, the views are opening up beautifully now. Although looking up the way to where we're going, you can see it has clouded over a bit. Which I am not complaining about. I am starting to cool down nicely now. And just a little bit up from those last few buildings, we do have a few more. These ones are dated a little later, 1740 to 1950. But I think I've found the best thing I have ever found in the Lake District. Now this might not look like much. It's a bit of an old mining tunnel, pretty dark and wet. You wouldn't want to camp in there. But this is the only ever air conditioning I have ever found in the Lake District because I'm knelt right in front of it and the draft coming out of it is absolutely ice cold. So if you are coming up here on a hot day, I highly recommend that you stop here and cool yourselves down. That is absolutely amazing. I've just come off the path slightly because we've reached the town. See the path is just there, but I could not resist the temptation here to come and have a look at this town. Look how clear that water is and be cool myself down once again so i'm gonna go and wash my face dip my hat in it a couple of minutes cool down and then straight up to that top Oh, that feels amazing. <sighs> I'm directly above the town now and the Garmin is saying 0 0.41 of a mile till we hit the summit. But it's steep. Of course it is. <laughs> Cracking views down the valley and over the town. See people and dogs swimming. Absolutely idyllic. And I'm going that way, heading up zigzag path there and I believe that there must be the top. I am really not too far off the top now. Just up there you can actually see the summit cairn. You now see the sea. Coniston and Windermere as well. And we've now got two towns in view from this point. These towns were clearly used for the mining in this area. They must have been. They must have been piped down to those buildings down the bottom. As well as the cracking view, we've got a lovely, lovely cool breeze. So just before I make that final ascent, 
I'm going to stay here for four or five minutes and cool down and then I'll see you at the top we are almost at the top two hours and ten minutes including filming and quite a lengthy break at the tarn so I reckon certainly today I could have done it in just under two hours a normal walking about an hour and a half very hazy but awesome views today absolutely unreal looks like there might be a few pictures here and I've also spotted a few just down the way I always keep my eye out just coming up to the summit just so I've got plenty of options but there we go that is the summit of the old man of Coniston well this is actually not the trig this is the highest point so we'll tap this one but we will go make it official I'm not gonna lie I'm a little bit tired but finally after many years Old Man of Coniston done and boshed yet another one off the list starting to get through a few mountains this year oh this is awesome up here just looking back to the highest point there back down cracking views looking over the backside into Langdale's and right over to the sea absolutely fantastic so I'm gonna have a scout around for a few more pictures for the night get some photos cool myself down and it is now quarter to four so it is a little early for getting the tent set up so once I've found my pitch I'm gonna get my sit pad out and just chill out until it is proper time to get the tent up it's a bit of a Brucey bonus day today looking around for a pitch on top of the old man of Coniston and although I did find a couple of pitches just below the summit and up the top it was a little rocky so I've been looking around and I noticed a summit in front of me I had a quick check on the old googly maps brim fell it's a Wainwright not too far away we'll go and tap that one as well shall we you can see the old man of Coniston just in front of us I'll spin you around the back way because it's a bit more picturesque and there's Brimfell Wainwright number two of the day Brimfell done and boshed and if you guys are heading up to the old man of Coniston for a camp I highly recommend no what will it be half a mile maybe there's much more pictures here as you can see it's quite flat and the sun's going to be going down over there somewhere all right let's find a pitch for the night definitely for this time well as you can see i've got the tent up but i'm not quite fully set up yet we're just looking out the tent these views i know i said it on my last solo but these are one of the best views I've had out of my tent in a while but before we have a look at that I've got another new bit of kit with us I've been using the Flextail Tiny Pump X V2 for some time now and it's been nothing short of exceptional I've been using it to blow up my sleeping mat and also using it as my light overnight and it's been nothing short of fantastic but I've been approached by another new company one that I've not heard of before and that is Aerogogo and they have sent me the Giga Pump 4 which as you will see looks pretty much similar to what I've been using lights on the bottom you've got your button for your light your button for your pump USB chargeable although it's not round it's like a hexagonal shape which I like because if you want to lay it flat and use it as a side light you can do what I'm also really liking about this as well is the hook the one on my tiny pump XV2 keeps coming off which is a bit annoying to be fair but this seems really sturdy the lights got three settings 40 200 and 400 lumens which is more than enough 
for a camping light. And it's also got two or three settings on the pump speed as well, which the Tiny Pump X doesn't have. The weight of the pump is 100 grams, but the net weight of all the package is 160 grams. It comes in a nice bag with pretty much identical attachments. All of these pumps seem to be using the same attachments now. I'm not gonna go into power ratings and ampages and all that kind of gubbins. I'm just gonna show you how it blows up my Cedar Summit e -Flight XT Extreme. And then we'll see what the light looks like once it gets dark. I've got my sleep mat rolled out and the Aerogogo Giga Pump 4 attached to it. Let's see how quickly it can inflate the Cedar Summit e -Flight XT Extreme. As you can see there, we've got the pump button, double press. Yeah. So it automatically starts on full speed and then when you press it, it slows down. That seems to be doing a pretty good job. There's the pump changing north, so I know that my mat is fully inflated. Now without timing it, I think that was actually quicker than my Tiny Pump XV2. There's links to the web page and the product in the description. It prices at $40, which comes out at around about £32 from the website, which is around about the same price as the Tiny Pump XV2. However, with a little bit of searching online, I have found it for as low as £22. So if you're looking for another option for blowing up your sleeping mat and your light for the evening, then the Aerogogo Giga Pump 4 certainly does the job. So for now, I'm gonna continue with my full setup and then we'll have a look around. I am so pleased I come up here today. This is nothing short of exceptional. It really is. And I know I keep saying it. This is why I love coming wild camping. And this is why I film it and I put it on YouTube. I am in the Nightcat one person ultralight trekking pole tent, aka the Pussycat tent. We have got my Sea to Summit E for Light XT Extreme and my seat to Summit Spark 2 cheap pillar. The Atom Pack's rucksack is so light, I've actually had it nearly blow away on me and it's not that windy, so I'm having to keep it inside my tent. Real term at pulled pork for tea tonight and the usual all day breakfast from Wayfarers for morning. I've got one vodka and coke and I've got one coke Tactical Ducks also enjoying the view outside the tent door. If you know, you know. Look at this. Look at this. Unreal. Absolutely blinking unreal. When I woke up this morning, looked online, got a bit of a shock. Muggins here wasn't aware that there was a high aurora alert. And there's been some absolutely stunning aurora photos taken in Great Britain. Some of the best I've seen, I reckon it's probably the best show of the aurora we've had. However, tonight we are still on high aurora alert. So I have got my fingers crossed, I have got my toes crossed, I've got everything else crossed that we actually get some more aurora tonight. Because that would turn this into the best wild camping experience I've ever had. And at the moment, I've got the whole place to myself. It's so quiet, just that little breeze, and I'm hoping I'll be able to get the drone up for you. For now, I'm gonna sit myself down, no chair. I've gotta admit, with saving a bit of weight and space for the smaller rucksack, I've only packed my sit pad, and I'm missing my chair. But, lightweight backpacking means you've gotta make some sacrifices. It's not full lightweight, because I've obviously got the, the coke, the vodka and coke, and I've carried two and a half litres of water up here. And normal multi-day hikes, you carry half a litre of water at a time and a water filter. 
but I should get an idea in the morning when I'm going back down the mountain just how light I can get my rucksack and keep your eyes peeled because there will be an ultralight camp coming soon. So for now it's chill out time and vodka and coke time. I've been sat here for a good bit now. I've just had my tea, the pulled pork from Real Termat. You guys have seen me eat that a thousand times so I didn't fancy showing you again. But as always, superb. The Isle of Man once again is clearly visible to the naked eye over the sea. I'm not sure whether the camera will pick it up. But these views, man, over towards Blackpool, you see the uh, tide's gone out. Absolutely stunning. But up in the sky, the higher clouds are moving a lot quicker than the lower clouds. And not that I know much about it, but I'm hoping that's a sign of some solar flares and we're going to get some aurora tonight. That would absolutely make my camp. I've still got the whole spot to myself. I've not seen anybody. Almost six o'clock now. This is, <laughs> I've said it before, I'll say it again, absolute camping perfection. I absolutely love this. I've just been sat here on my own. Clouds keep changing, the light keeps changing. I've not got bored. Not for one second. Love it. There's not going to be much more to show you tonight. As you can hear, the wind's getting up, but it's all good. It's all good. One of the best wild camps I've had. One of the best views I've had out the tent. Absolutely unreal. I'm going to switch the camera off. I'm going to try to get you as many photos as I can. And hopefully the Aurora make an appearance. So for now, it's good night. Enjoy the photos and footage I've got for you overnight. And we'll see you in the morning. I dare you to fix me I'm crossing the line again Falling on my knees No stranger to pain It's never ending It's only I can't forget My heart won't let it rest But you Keep on forgiving Admit that I'm afraid If I let go of this pain Am I Complacently betrayed There no air left to breathe I'm drowning Vultures are circling me Around it I need to fight I know it's just so hard To let it go Shine a light I can see can't forget my heart won't let it rest but you keep on forgiving admit that I'm afraid if I let go of this rage am I completely betrayed something I can't forget My heart won't let it rest But you Keep on forgiving Oh, oh, oh. Admit that I'm afraid If I let go of this rage Am I Complacently betrayed My heart 
my love, my life, the prize. It's hard to find, to find goodbye. Good morning everyone. As usual, four o'clock, wide awake. I didn't see any Aurora last night, but I left the DJI out on um, time lapse all night. So you never know, I might have picked something up. The Aragor goes to me proud. Let's have a look at the lights on it. That's fully bright, middle, and the low settings perfect for inside the tent. Just a shame it doesn't have the light diffuser. But nevertheless, it's done as proud. So it is time to get some all day breakfast on from Wayfarer. You know where it's at, pussy cat. Definitely ready for this breakfast. However, one of the things about sacrificing my normal tents for a super lightweight tent is a lack of space. Overall for multi-day hikes it is worth it but for normal camping for me it just isn't. However a trial with the Atom Packs, the lightweight tent and the whole setup I've got tonight is good practice for Hadrian's Wall which I'm doing later this year. But for now it's all day breakfast time. Oh. It should give me enough energy to get back down the hill to the car. It is a bit breezy as well this morning. Hopefully that'll back off once I start the descent. Right, I'll away and finish this and then it's going to be time to start packing down and getting ready to go home. We're up and about, it's five to five and the views this morning are nothing like what they were last night. Got some sheep for company, everything's looking very misty. We've got some fast moving high cloud. And it looks like the forecast bad weather is coming in. We're supposed to get thunderstorms and heavy rain later on. So it's most definitely time to start getting packed up and get my tired backside backed out of the car and back home. It's now 20 to 6 in the morning and that is me all packed up and ready to go home. The Atom Packs EP40 Plus ready to go with my rubbish bag attached to it. So as always, and as it should be, I'll be leaving no trace. And that pack this morning weighs nothing, which is much more what it'll be like when I'm going on a multi-day hike. So I'm super happy with that, and super happy with the first trial of it. Still looking very misty this morning, but absolutely stunning.
thank you guys so much for tuning into the video i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have so once again until next time stay safe much love and be a lad